Warmer temperatures are on the horizon, and that means road construction season will soon kick into high gear. Delane Cleveland joins us now from Robbinsdale, where the West Broadway Bridge reconstruction project is about to enter a new phase. Delane? Shannon, this winter, crews were busy putting up supporting structures for the new northbound bridge. That part of the project is now complete, but a new phase is going to begin on Monday. People who live and work around here are going to have to prepare for road closures. On Monday, construction crews will install bridge beams for the deck of the new northbound bridge on West Broadway. This job will require a large crane to secure the four remaining beams. Officials from Hennepin County say the beam installation is an activity that requires crews to be especially careful. So they're planning to close the intersection of Lowry Avenue and Theodore Worth Parkway, which is directly under the bridge. Those closures will take place Monday and Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. Hennepin County is planning to put up signs for people traveling through the area to let them know about the detours. The county urges people to follow the signed detours to keep the local streets safe for families who live in the area. For a map of the detours, we have a link on our website at ccxmedia.org. Meanwhile, Hennepin County expects construction to last throughout the summer. In Robbinsdale, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. A vehicle pursuit early Friday morning involved armed suspects, a stolen vehicle, and several Northwest Suburban Police Departments. The pursuit involved Robbinsdale Police and eventually entered into Brooklyn Park. Police initially had come across a stolen vehicle. Authorities later determined the suspects in the vehicle were wanted for burglary and assaulting an officer and were believed to be armed. The chase eventually ended in Brooklyn Center with the vehicle crashing and the two suspects attempting to run away. A Hennepin County K-9 unit helped local police arrest both suspects. As the price of everything from gas to groceries continues to rise, we're hearing from a Brooklyn Center nonprofit feeling the impact. Community Emergency Assistance Program, or SEEP, offers a food assistance program for families in need. Officials say SEEP distributed more food in 2021 than it ever had. And now with inflation pushing the cost of food and energy to their highest prices in 40 years, they expect to give out even more food this year. They've already seen a 20% increase in new families visiting SEEP for the first time. Hunger has been really prevalent in our community for decades and, and the pandemic and economic downturns have really just exacerbated those challenges that were already there. And so our community is definitely feeling that. SEEP is currently in the middle of a campaign to raise money for its food assistance programs. From now through April 10th, all donations of food and money will receive a proportional match from the organization Minnesota Food Share. Redistricting has state legislative candidates changing plans. Golden Valley City Council member Kimberly Sandberg will not seek election to a higher office at this time. She announced her intention to run for state representative, but made the decision not to run after new legislative maps came out and put her in the same district as Representative Mike Freiburg. On Twitter, she said she was excited to continue working on the Golden Valley City Council, advocating for affordable housing, reimagining public safety, and combating climate change, among other initiatives. The Plymouth City Council will review plans for a new apartment building that begins to fill an affordable housing need in the city. Doring Companies is proposing a seven-story apartment building just east of Bachman's along Highway 55. It would have 176 units, 20 percent of which would be affordable to residents earning 50 percent or less of area median income. The apartments would include a variety of amenities, among them a pool, bocce ball courts, and a pet spa for dog owners. The city would have to make a number of concessions to allow for the project. One of them is it would have to increase the number of units allowed per acre in its land use guidelines. The project would also be closer than normally allowed to a wetland. The Plymouth Planning Commission recommended approval on a 5-1 vote. The City Council is expected to take up the project on March 22nd. One of the fun parts of high school theater is seeing the unique spin that students can put on shows that have been around for decades. In today's weekend showcase, we take you to Cooper High School for a production of The Wiz like you've never seen before. at Cooper High School are back on stage, ready to show you there's no place like home. I'm really looking forward to just putting a smile on people's faces. You know, it's telling a really big story that I think is really important for people to like 
Just for them to get to know. It's a show of someone who's lost trying to find their way home, but making a bunch of friends as they find their way home. Tin Man! Yes, honey. Students are putting their own spin on The Wiz, which is a soulful adaptation of The Wizard of Oz. We're having it go through different types of video games, which I think it's more relatable to what it is now. In like the first scene, I'm actually holding my little tablet and it has Mario on it. It's basically foreshadowing that, you know, I'm going into this Mario world and I'm like, whoa, I've seen it before, but at the same time, it's something new to me. Aside from the games, <laughs> The show is fun. It's fun being the lion, being a coward and trying to be scary, but really I am a coward, so it's pretty fun. Zavante Scott says actors feel honored to be a part of a show that broke barriers, but also because it's a great show for actors to stretch their skills. If you want to mess with me, I'll knock your senses and stuff like that. So if you hear the southern accent, it's like that. I would jump off different types of heights and maybe do little Russian kicks. I would roll on my back, lots of somersaults and all that. My center of gravity is all over the place. I can't fully bend down and do all of that. There are five performances of The Wiz scheduled in March. Students say you'll appreciate the story, the music, and the soul of the show. Not only is it one of those tales that kind of everybody knows, but it's also more of a people of color representation. For Weekend Showcase, Shannon Slatten, CCX News. For the fourth straight season, Wyzetta and Hopkins met for the Section 6-4A girls basketball title. The top-ranked Royals were looking for an eighth straight section championship. A nearly full house at the Lindbergh Center for the Section 6-4A championship game. And a high-energy first half in this one. Amaya Battle drives it all the way to the basket to score and give Hopkins an 8-3 lead. Shannon Fornshell is left open in the corner for Wyzetta and hits a three-pointer. That ties the game at 10. Bryn Senden steals the ball for Wyzetta. Mara Braun heads down court and hits the tough pull-up jumper for two over 12 first-half points. The Royals get a little separation right before halftime. Liv McGill with a blocked shot at one end, and then the sophomore guard goes coast to coast and finishes with a finger roll lay-in at the other end. She scores 21 points in the night. Hopkins leads by six at halftime. Second half, Abby Krasinski trying to keep Wysetta close. The junior scores 10 second half points. But the Trojans never get closer than seven the rest of the way. Nunu Agara drives and scores off the glass. She scores 20 points as Hopkins goes on to beat Wysetta 84-66. It's the Royals 16th section title since 2002. And they are on to the state tournament starting Wednesday in Minneapolis. The Maple Grove girls basketball team moved from Section 8 to Section 5 this season. The Crimson were shooting for a spot in the state tournament Thursday night. And Jason Melillo has the highlights. Section 5 for a title on the line between Maple Grove and Roseville. Ava Cosette drives and finishes for Grove early in the first half. Kara Hogue attacks baseline and gets the reverse layup to drop 11-4 Crimson. Then Jordan Odie catch and fire three is good for the MG freshman. The Raiders go on a late first half rush. Drew Johnston launches and hits from distance. Then with less than 10 seconds until the break, Lucia Sunberg cashes in the money ball, cutting the Grove lead to six. Second half, Gabby Kopp hits a three and is fouled as the Raiders draw even at 25 all. Kendall Barnes drives for another Roseville and one. Raiders have the momentum. Kennedy Click drives and a nice dime to Kyla Overski for the Crimson Hoop. Then Odie crossover hesitation dribble drive and she scores, putting Grove up 41-39. The defense backs off Hattie DeVries and the Roseville senior cans a three-pointer, Raiders up 47-43. Then DeVries delivers underneath, Raiders smelling victory. Less than a minute to go, Overski hits a big shot for Maple Grove, cutting the Roseville lead to two, but that's as close as the Crimson get. Roseville wins 60-50, and the Raiders are section champions. Jason Melillo, CCX Sports. The Totino Grace girls basketball team advanced to the section 4-3A final with Ace Hill Murray. Here's Jay Wilcox with the highlights. 
Totino Grace hosts Hill Murray in the Section 4 3A Girls Basketball Final. Grace is Leah Dengerud with the steal and layup on her way to a 23-point night for the Eagles. Ella Runyon to Evelyn Perkins for the nice layup for Hill Murray as they go in front 11 to 10. But Grace goes on a 21-4 run. Hannah Herzig nails a three as the Eagles go up 31-15 at halftime. 24 for Herzig. Second half and great passing for TG as Herzig finds Dangerud cutting for two and it's 36-24. The Pioneers battle back. Runyon scores and is fouled. She scores 23 and they are within three. But Totino Grace weathers the storm. A great give and go as Herzig scores it. The Eagles win the section title with a 59-50 victory over Hill Murray. Um, it feels amazing. Um, I'm so proud of this team and we've been working this entire season since November for it. So it's just amazing to see all our hard work going to good use. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.